Okay, hi, this is Steve from Ultraceps T-Shirt Color Separation Software. And here I'm going to give you a quick tip uh, that could possibly save a lot of problems, especially when dealing with opening color separations you may have done within older versions of Photoshop or opening them within older versions of Adobe Illustrator for film output. And that's with using absolute Pantone value color names for your channels, which I never recommend doing. Now, I'll, I'll, now I'll tell you why here and I'll tell you how to go about uh, doing it properly at least so you won't wind up uh, in any type of difficulty with uh, within your shop or if you're giving this separation for someone else uh, to work with. Now here we have two identical separations. Um, as you can see, the yellow, the blue, and the red have a number next to it. Those numbers indicate an approximate PMS value. So someone in the press room has a, a Pantone color book, which everyone should have. You'll know sort of what color ink uh, to put in those screens, okay? But there's a difference between the blue channels within these two separations. Now the first one is simply says blue 2727. The second separation says Pantone 2727C. Now, what's the difference between the two? Because they look identical. I'll show you right now. Now, if we go to the first separation and we double click that blue channel, which will bring up the spot channel options window, click the color chip, you'll see that the color picker window came up and not the color libraries. This means this is a color that I made that suits the artwork. That's very close to the original. Let's click cancel and cancel again. Now, let's double click the Pantone 2727C channel in this separation. Brings up the spot channel options, and when we click the color chip, as you will see here, the color library window opens, and this gives a list of Pantone colors. Now, this indicates that the color for this channel, 2727C, was selected using this color library within Adobe Photoshop. Now, although you can do it, it's not necessarily a good idea to do so because older versions of software may not have that particular Pantone value available within whatever color libraries are installed within it. So if you may, now blue 2727 is probably there, but many other Pantone colors aren't. They're adding hundreds and hundreds of Pantone colors uh, every year to these to these color libraries. So it's a good probability that a color separation done with say Photoshop Creative Cloud 217, well, there may be a problem with trying to open it with Photoshop version CS3 because it may not be able to read those Pantone color values. Now, how are you gonna fix this? Well, I'll show you exactly how. First thing we'll do is we'll double click that channel We'll click the color chip, which brings up the color libraries window. Now we're going to click the picker button, which brings up the color picker spot color window. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this little circle and we're just going to move it a little bit. Okay. We're going to make that color slightly different, actually cleaning it up a little bit. And when you when you are moving it, you'll notice that all these numbers are changing. The HSB value, the RGB channels. Uh, values because it's not exactly that color anymore. Okay, so we've taken away that absolute PMS information. Now we're going to click OK and let's just change. Now we'll change this just to blue 2727 and click OK. Okay, so now when we double click blue 2727 and we click the color chip, the color picker window appears and not the color library window. And this particular way of choosing your colors will always avoid any type of error when using a, an older version of either Photoshop or Illustrator to either open or output the color separations with. Now, one last thing I'll leave you with is that the PMS color chip uh, selections in Photoshop is a good way to find out sort of what color you made, 
okay? And a lot of times you could start by using the PMS value and then change it just like we did. But let's say we mixed up this blue on our own. So we went to this, uh, we went to the spot channel options. We clicked the uh, color chip and now our spot color, color picker window appears. Now at this point, you could click color libraries. Color libraries will open up and it'll tell you, yeah, that's color that you made is close to 2727. So at least sort of now you have an idea of what color to label your channel with. So you can just click cancel because we don't want to use that channel. And then you could just name it blue 2727. However, I must warn you about one thing. It's unbelievable how often the color libraries will be off. Okay, now this color I made is yellow 102. And that's what we want to use on press. But the color library, as you can see here, is selecting Pantone 395 which is actually kind of like a off limish yellow. And that's not a, the type of yellow we made. As clear, as clear as day here, we made a very bright yellow. So it's always a good idea not to absolutely trust what those uh, PMS color books uh, identify a color as within Photoshop. Uh, I know I never do, and I usually have a, uh, a PMS book on my desk you know, handy and ready, and I'd rather scroll through that to get the idea of um, what to label my colors with, Un unless, you know, I'm absolutely sure that I'm making no mistake. And that's about it. That's how you should uh, mix and make and label your colors within a multi-channel color separation in Photoshop to avoid any sort of backward compatibility errors when trying to open and or print with older versions of Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. Thank you very much. See you next time.